Tennessee's middleweight division right now. Uh, Kyle, first off, wanted to ask you, uh, you know, you're coming off of a big one in your home country of Australia, beating Chris Camozzi, and, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts. What was it like uh, getting a getting a win in your home country in front of such a, a big crowd? I, uh, it was awesome. You know, the opportunity to fight back home in front of the home crowd, um, especially in the UFC, you know, it's the, it's the top of the sport, so to get that opportunity to fight back home in front of the home, home crowd was just phenomenal, you know, it's a I'll right. So, um, you know, I know the Ultimate Fighter has been around for a little while. Um, you know, you were on, like I said, season 11. Uh, j- just curious to know from your perspective, uh, since the show has been around, it's not as new as it used to be, but, you know, what was it like uh, for you doing the show for your career? How do you think it's helped you, uh, you know, as far as your mixed martial arts career goes? I, mean, I think it helped a lot. You know, um, I've been fighting a while and trying to make it the big show for a while. And, um, you know, Never, you know, I used to fight the lead XC for a bit, but uh, you know, it never quite happened. So, um, you know, the show come along and give me that great opportunity to um, get into the UFC. So, you know, uh, no doubt I wouldn't probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the show. So, you know, I owe a lot to the show. Right, and, and I was curious, uh, you know, how long have you been uh, training with uh, Craig Jackson and those guys down in uh, Albuquerque? And you know, what's it been like training with uh, such a high level team? Um, I've been training here for probably, uh, well, I used to, when I lived in Australia, I'd come over here like, uh, twice a year for a couple of weeks. So I've been doing that for probably, you know, seven, seven years now. And then I made the move over here permanently about two years ago. But, uh, you know, as far as training here at Greg's, it's, it, you know, it's awesome. Um, I think it's one of the best camps in the world. Uh, there's a great group of guys there, yeah, top level athletes. So, um, everybody pushes you every day. And I think it's just a great camp to be part of. Yeah. Now, um, you know, t- talking about you know fighting in the UFC and being on the big stage, you mentioned the the show in Australia. You know, getting that big win. Um, you know, at, at this point, uh, you know, you've also fought, like you said, for Lead XC and some other organizations. You know, do you still feel you know any extra nerves being in the octagon, or do you feel pretty comfortable now being in the in the UFC? Um, there's always some nerves. Uh, I think I feel there's nerves for any fight organization. You know, um, I think they're just normal fight nerves. Um. There's no added pressure for me, you know, I take every fight just as a fight. Uh, of course I want to win, I want to go down and put a good show on, but I don't put that added pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, talk about, uh, you know, what what specific guys are you training for for this fight? Do you have uh, the same set of training partners all the time, or do you sometimes mix it up depending on, you know, the style matchup? Uh, we mix it up a little bit, you know, uh, it's basically the same group of guys. Um, you know, we got uh, like Brian Stan. And John Jones, Joey Beast, and you Keith Jay, all them guys. We've also got a lot of good, like, good wrestlers who sort of are starting to fight now and stuff like that. So we've got a big group of guys that help push us every day. So, you know, it's just a great chance to be part of yeah, yeah, and since we turned with him, I mean, John Jones, uh, that guy, that kid's a real phenom. He's, you know, come on the stage pretty fast, and he's suddenly looking like, you know, one of the more unbeatable guys in the UFC. Uh, you know, just, you know, training with him. Uh, is he as good as people think he is? And, uh, you know, since he is young, do you think maybe, uh, you know, he has some areas to improve and he's going to get better? Uh, I think absolutely he's going to get better. Now he's so young and he hasn't been in the sport for that long, so he can only get better, you know, and uh, he, he is as good as everyone says he is, you know, um, you know, you show him one thing one day and then you come in a couple of days later and he's mastered it, you know, so he's absolutely a freak and he picks up stuff so well and uh, he's got a great mind for the sport and he's really creative, so, you know, I think he's, he's great in the future of the sport. Yeah, and something, you know, he kind of represents, at least to me, I think George St. Pierre was the guy before him, but, uh, you know, it seems like, the, you know, the longer the sport's going to be around, we're going to see more and more top-level athletes that can maybe come in and pick up the sport really fast. So, uh, you know, being in the sport as long as you have, you know, what's it like seeing these young, high-level athletes that can move up the ladder so fast and, you know, as a long-time veteran, does it, you know, you know, what's it like seeing these young guys in there? Does that motivate you to, to keep pushing and improving? Absolutely, you know, it motivates me a lot. These young kids now grow up watching the sport and they grow up, you know, uh, practicing, watching it on TV and mucking around with their friends and practicing at home and stuff before it even happened, you know. Uh, I didn't even know about mixed martial arts, so I went to a class and, and someone showed me what it was, you know, I think I was 21 or 22 at the time, so, you know, I think it was a great start on us and, and kids are sort of more focused on it now and, and grow up doing it, so. Absolutely, it motivates me. It means that I push myself harder and train harder so I can uh, compete with other guys. 
Right. Now, uh, you know, talking about your opponent coming up, it's going to be UFC on versus 5, uh, October 14th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You're facing Ed Herman, another guy that probably fans are very familiar with. He's been on the Ultimate Fighter in a prior season. Uh, you know, a pretty well-rounded guy, uh, you know, a pretty good wrestler. Uh, striking's pretty solid. Uh, you know, how, how do you think you two match up, and do you think there's any specific area that you're going to have the advantage, or do you think, uh, or, or do you not really focus on that kind of stuff? You know, I, I don't really focus on that. I, I leave everything up to my coach to come up with a good game plan, and, and I try and implement that game plan in a fight. I know it, it is well-rounded, you know, I've watched a lot of footage on him. He's a tough guy, he can take a shot, so it's going to be a great fight, you know, and it's going to be hard to put away, so it's just going to be, I think it's going to be a tough battle, and it's going to be a great fight for the fans. Right. Now, he obviously had a really quick win in his last fight, but before that, he'd been coming off of an injury. Um, I know injury is a part of the sport, but, you know, since you're involved in it yourself, uh, do you think uh, if this fight goes into the deeper waters that maybe you'll have the advantage just because of how long he was out of action, or do you think that that's probably not going to be an issue? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue. You know, uh, we're at the top of the sport. Like, uh, you know, he knows he's on the big show, so he's going to come into a fight not prepared. You know, he's Now, if you don't mind, uh, let's go back to you know, you know the fight scene in Australia, um, being that being where you're from. Um, yeah, I know there've been some fighters that have come from there. You know, Elvis Sinisik, one of the early UFC pioneers. There've been some you know pretty decent sized shows that have been in Australia. But uh, for the fans who aren't familiar with it, maybe you know, uh, watching the pay per view, it seems like it's really really popular there. So, uh, what, what's the uh, UFC and the MMA scene like over there? Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's got a really good rap over there in Australia. Um, the fans love it, the people love it, you know. Um, I think as far as being accepted by the general public, it's still probably five years behind where America is now, but it, it's getting bigger and bigger, you know. Um, I think, especially the UFC going to Australia, it only helps the sport, you know, and, and you can tell by the fan reaction at the, at the UFC in Australia, the last one, that uh, the fans loved it. So, you know, I think um, it's great. I think they should have more shows there. Right. Now, uh um you know, just looking at the, this fight card coming up, um, you know, if you, let's say you get by Ed Herman, um, do, you know, do you have an idea or a feeling of maybe where this might put you in the middleweight division, or do you have any goals as far as when you want to be, you know, in, in title contention, or, uh, you know, if not, how do you kind of put all that stuff out of your mind so you just focus on the fight? You know, what I do, I just focus on the fight. I don't try to pass any opponents, no matter who he is. So, um, at the moment, I'm 100% focused on Ed Herman, and, and I guess, uh, you know, after the fight, then we'll see where the cards lie. But uh, at the moment, my my main goal is that I'm in a way I'm looking past that because I just tough to. Yeah, definitely. All right, Kyle. Well, I uh, appreciate you taking all the time. I know you're busy, got a you know a bunch of training to do and everything, and probably some other interview requests. But uh, thanks again. I want to give you an opportunity. You know, if there's any uh, anyone you want to thank or any shout outs or sponsors you'd like to mention. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, Headrush, of course, and take me all the way. Uh, Monty Sports here in Albuquerque. Uh, you know, that's all my friends and family and the team for helping me get ready for this fight. You know, um, it, it's a tough sport, so it's good to have that support behind that. All right, definitely. All right. Like I said, I appreciate you taking the time, and we'll all be tuning in on Saturday to see your fight with Ed Herman on the card headlined by Darren Hardy for versus Chris Lytle. So, Kyle, once again, good luck, and uh, look forward to speaking with you again. Thanks. All right, thank you. Have a good one.